Hello, everybody, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Have a Good Day podcast for mental health and all things positivity. My name is Jack Mancini, and it is my goal to make sure that everyone out there listening to this right now has a good day. Remember to breathe in and breathe out. Today, I'm joined by the older sibling of the first ever guest on the show, Attilio. She studied at Toronto Metropolitan for child and youth care, so I'm sure we'll get into that. And I thought that the perspective of someone who works in the field would be pretty cool. So please welcome my guest, Ariana DeBerardinis. How are you doing? I'm good. A little stressed right now, I'm not going to lie. How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you sh- don't be stressed. I-, I can tell you're nervous, <laughs> but it's really okay. Uh, Honestly, there's a lot going on right now. Uh-huh. This made me a little nervous, but uh-huh. also... I'm going on vacation pretty soon, oh, okay. and you can see by like the news, the airport is a little hectic. Yes, so I'm yes. a little nervous about that and packing and stuff. So. Yeah, I'm also going on vacation soon. <laughs> like I'm going on January second. So oh yeah, I'm leaving Jan third. Oh yeah, that's crazy. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that. Are you uh, going to Cuba? Yeah, I'm going Me to Cuba. Me too. Going to Cuba. Oh, wow, <laughs> I went. Okay, we got to find out where, what okay, resort because okay, okay, okay. that would actually be crazy yeah. for the same one. How did we not talk about that? Okay. Anyway, um, please tell the audience a little bit about yourself. So just your age, your job. Yeah. So. So my name is Ariana DeBerardinis. I'm 22 years old. Um, my program at university was child and youth care currently, mm-hmm. which makes me a child and youth care practitioner. Currently, mm-hmm. I work with young children with autism spectrum disorder. Mm-hmm. They're around three to four years old. Cool. Cool. Okay. We'll definitely get into that later on. <laughs> um, so just straight away, I want to ask you the first question, kind of go into your childhood. Uh, I know I asked Attilio a few of these questions, but I'm sure your perspective will be a little different. So to start off, what was your childhood like? Just generally overall, if you could kind of sum it up, what was it like for you? Uh, overall, I think my childhood was was great. Mm-hmm. Um, I was happy. I was, I, I honestly, for me, I wasn't a very outgoing child. I was very to myself. Every I was very nervous child, mm-hmm. um, very shy. Um, it was really hard for me to make friends because I would never talk to anybody first. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's my own personal um, child self. Mm-hmm. But like the people around me made my childhood great. Like mm-hmm. my mom, my stepdad, Attilio, my brother, mm-hmm. like they all made me more comfortable and come mm-hmm. out of my shell more i think without atilio i think i would have honestly a really boring childhood like oh, yeah? yeah without atilio i think my <laughs> childhood would be so boring like no laughter no fun yes like he is definitely the life of the party uh-huh. and he definitely made me who i am mm-hmm. because i think without him i would just be a total like a little turtle hiding the shell all the time. <laughs> that's, definitely that's really <laughs> so you say that's like kind of your biggest struggle then uh, definitely anxiety uh-huh. and like being social mm-hmm. and coming out of my shell and meeting new people is really really hard for me mm. so yeah. going into anxiety then uh what is kind of your experience with anxiety like um you've had it since you were a little little kid or yeah so yeah. honestly i don't really know where it started i think i guess if we're going like super deep into it already i think it definitely happened after my father passed away but mm-hmm. i think it has a little bit to do with genetics because my mom is pretty it's a pretty anxious mm-hmm. person and gets stressed very easily and so do i yeah and i overthink everything <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I feel um yeah i think I, I would say from a young age, I've always been anxious going into high school, even now. Mm. As you see, I'm literally shaking yes, right now yeah, as I'm doing okay. this yeah. interview. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And as uh, as for panic attacks, like, have you experienced those? Too, um, not like very severe. I mm-hmm. would say the most is like just go to the bathroom and like have a hard time breathing and like crying a lot. Like, mm-hmm. uh to tell you a story atilio knows this like when i got in my first big car accident Mm. um i was so overwhelmed and so like so stressed and overthinking everything that i was literally screaming at myself like telling myself that i cannot like um i don't deserve to drive Mm. i don't deserve to have a vehicle i shouldn't be behind the wheel like i almost killed atilio you know what i mean how old were you at this age oh 20 20 okay 20. yeah so you're yeah. still really really young, yeah i yeah. still have my older car mm-hmm. so yeah it's just i really get down on myself and i just shut down and it's more like saying really mean things to myself and mm. just like getting really stuck in my head i, mm. I find so would you say like now you still are like that's something you struggle with like kind of the self-talk kind of yeah thing? definitely yeah uh, yeah, self talk is super, super important. Mm-hmm. Um, like for me personally, I've talked about it on this podcast and stuff. 
self-talk was the thing that helped me get out of like my my darkest days to be honest because like i found that just the people who are around me naturally were a little more pessimistic so that yeah. rubbed off on me and that's nothing you know against them it's just i'm i'm in a pretty impressionable person you know what i mean so like if i'm around a group of people i feel like i kind of sink into whatever you know what i mean yeah you kind of follow their lead yeah exactly their vibe exactly so Mm -hmm. that's why i feel like uh i've had to kind of go a little more solo on things just to find my Mm -hmm. own self you know Mm -hmm. and self-talk was a really really big thing in that just being like you know, like you're good enough or, or have a good day, right? Yeah, like, it's that whole positive, something. that whole positive aspect on life and being able to like tell yourself positive things to move forward. Mm-hmm. Even And you got to, you got to really mean it. You can't just say it to say yeah, it. Yeah, you can't just say it to say it. Right? You have to actually like mean it deep down. And feel it. And, uh, <laughs> and feel it, exactly. Uh, so what were you feeling kind of in that, that moment of the car crash, like that story I to was... go back? I was just insanely, I was insanely overwhelmed and super stressed out because I was afraid I was going to get my license taken away because it was my fault. Like the Mm -hmm. crash was all my fault. And I think my biggest fear was that I put my brother and my dog (laughs) in danger. Yeah. Yeah. So I felt really bad and Mm -hmm. guilty for for doing that even though it was a mistake and yeah. i just my nerves overcame me like he screamed at me and i was like mm-hmm. break stop the car and instead of me breaking like i just pushed the gas mm, and because you panicked because right? i panicked yeah. exactly and i just couldn't it was like a like a involuntary bodily yes. movement like 100%. i couldn't i couldn't control it mm. and i yeah i just felt so bad and so guilty yeah well yeah i it. guess that's just anxiety exactly over, right? <laughs> yeah. um yeah, to, to go back to your childhood, though, because yeah. I was curious about that. Uh, what is kind of like a good memory, would you say? Like, what's like your best memory that you hold on to from your childhood, would you say? Uh, from my childhood. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Is, there, is there something that like comes yeah. from Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a bunch, mm-hmm. but I like my happiest. I feel like I have a lot of happy moments, but mm-hmm. whenever I think of my childhood, I love to make sure my dad is a part of it Mm -hmm. and I remember bits and pieces so even though I was only seven when he passed away there's still I still have very sorry six I still have very like fond memories I think with him my happiest memory was um I really wanted ice cream so badly and the ice cream truck was not you could hear it from outside making Mm -hmm. the (laughs) <laughs> the music yeah. and i was like dad i want ice cream i want ice cream and it's like the truck is so far away yeah. he literally puts on his slides runs out the house to go get me ice cream comes back <laughs> with the ice cream his feet are literally bloody full of blisters because he was running after this ice cream truck just to get me ice cream wow. and i think it was one of the happiest moments because then after until he was born he was alive <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, my mom had gotten ice cream for him already out of uh-huh. the freezer but yeah. i'm like i want my ice cream from the truck <laughs> <laughs> and then my dad went to go get it for me so i think that's like it's a really happy memory for me and then we all shared ice cream oh, with each other on the couch so it's so like cute. super yeah <laughs> that's really cute i like that story uh, <laughs> i asked Tilio this question mm-hmm. but uh did your parents like ever talk about mental health or anything like that growing up um i think me and Tilio had a very different perspective with our mental health mm-hmm. um Atilio keeps a lot of stuff in where if I keep everything in, I'll just like explode. Yeah. Right. So I need to talk about it or else I I just I'll freeze. Mm-hmm. So I tell my mom a lot of stuff, especially when I'm feeling really anxious. Um, when I was in a uh, university in high school, I talked to a lot about her about mental health because mm-hmm. I couldn't handle it on my own. And like in grade nine was really bad for me when I transitioned from elementary school to high school. Like there yeah. was a point where I wasn't eating drinking sleeping like i would just stay up and just study everything but like Mm -hmm. in grade nine like what why why (laughs) am i being like that in grade nine like it's really not that big of a deal but 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 to me yeah Yeah. i thought oh my god if i didn't get this mark it's going to be the end of the world i'm Uh not going to get into university i'm not you know what i mean yeah that's funny you mentioned that i was literally talking about a few days ago how in grade nine specifically you know, you, you panic about these tests, mm-hmm. like you're going to get a bad mark and it's worth like the tiniest sliver exactly. of your actual grade. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? But yeah, my, my mom, I think was my busy, biggest supporter through high school university when mm-hmm. I felt really stressed. Like I know I could go talk to her and she would calm me down. Mm-hmm. Even if like her advice was just like, don't think about it too much. Go get a drink of water. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like that's not like the <laughs> best advice for mental health, but it, 
uh, I think I still felt supported because Mm -hmm. I know I could go to her and talk to her. And I didn't feel like my feelings didn't matter Mm -hmm. because I know at least she was listening. And she was trying. And she was trying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you done therapy before? Um, A little Mm-hmm. After, I think in my fourth year of university, I did because it was my last year and I was overthinking a lot about my future and my job and what I was going to do after university. And mm-hmm. um, through my mom's work, she had like, I think it was, I think it's called LifeWorks and I could use her login and password and get like, I think it was three free sessions mm-hmm. from a counselor. So I did do that. Um, she did help me, but I did wish it was like an ongoing thing mm-hmm. and not just the three sessions because i feel like she didn't know enough about me to really give me the proper advice that i needed at the time for sure yeah with therapy i find like the the more that you get to know the other person like Mm -hmm. the other therapist and and open up then you can really make progress you know so it's not something you can just do in a few sessions exactly um i wanted to kind of ask what is like your daily life like right now what's kind of like your daily routine um right now i work monday to friday Mm -hmm. So I go to work for 8 a.m. I wake up, uh, do my whole routine. Mm-hmm. Um, I go go to work. I see see the kids that I work with all the time mm-hmm. and same coworkers, same thing every day. And then after work, I try to go to the gym. <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I feel up to it, I go to the same classes every week to the Zumba yeah. or it's like this, <laughs> I don't know, abs weight class thing. Yeah. <laughs> I try. Um, uh, and then I come home. And try to chill out the best that I can. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, my job can be quite stressful yeah, at times. Imagine, beca- yeah, because yeah, the little ones, they, um, they're they super energetic and they're running all the time. And mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes they're high risk of getting injuries. So you're always... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, you, sometimes I feel at work, I'm like, I'm not getting anywhere with them. Um, I feel like what I'm doing is not helping them. Mm. And you just have those bad days where you think like, Oh my God, I'm literally doing this for nothing. Mm -hmm. But then you have those days. These are the good days when you have those breakthrough, the breakthroughs with your kids and they make those improvements and you're like, Mm. yes, (laughs) yeah, it's a good (laughs) feeling. I did something. I made (laughs) a difference. And that is the best part of the job, I think. But yeah, I love my job. And uh, after my job, I just need to decompress. And Mm. I talk to my mom about my job. I talk to Atelier about my job. Um, Right now, I think my daily life is really focusing on my career Mm -hmm. right now since i just finished a uni in june my was my graduation Mm. so really moving on with my work and and my practice as a child and youth care worker that's cool so how did you get into uh kind of this field of mental health like how did you know that that's what you wanted to get into? Yeah. So when we were younger, um, we used to go to a, it was almost like a daycare Montessori school called Kinsey Company. And I, I was going, <laughs> it's like embarrassing. I was going until I was like 13 because oh, yeah? my mom got it free through her work. So we'd go to like their little summer camp programs mm-hmm. um, during summer. And instead of really being taken care of, I was more like an assistant <laughs> little yeah. assistant teacher yeah. going on. And I would help take care of the kids. And I met this little boy who had ASD, mm-hmm. autism spectrum disorder. Mm-hmm. And I just fell in love with him, with, with how he saw the world, with how he played with toys, with how mm-hmm. he talked to his um, support person. And it just made me think that is what I want to do. I want to be that support person Mm. for that young person. And all throughout high school, like I was really interested in um, like the anthropsych and social courses, the more mental health psychology courses than anything else. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just knew that's what I wanted to go to to school for after high school. And when looking at programs, I was really like, psychology is too broad. I want to work with young people, mm-hmm. like children and youth. Um, what can I do to get kind of like the best of both worlds where I get to focus on mental health, but also get to be a support person mm. for that young person, right? Yeah. And so when I was looking around, like Ryerson uh, had a great program called Child and Youth, Child and youth Care. And um, yeah, it, the program is all about mental health with young people all the way from literally infant and could be depending on the agency as old as like 25 oh wow yeah so i could be working with people literally the same age as me wow. which is pretty cool, cool right because yeah, you're cool. kind of going like through the same thing yeah. but yeah seeing their perspective must yeah be really interesting yeah the yeah. pro the program teaches you about like trauma and 
all different types of mental health um, disorders and challenges, anxiety, mm-hmm. depression, ADHD, autism. There's just so many things you learn. You got to go through the basics before you get into like the more in-depth stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, I did really did learn a lot. And I'm so grateful that I took that, that program because I really found who I was through that program mm. for sure. That's really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. wow. <laughs> uh, so would you say right now you're happy then? For sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing what I love. Mm-hmm. It's not exactly what I want to do because I really want to be more of like a counselor type thing. So I might go back to school for a master's in counseling psychology or social work because mm-hmm. then I can be registered with a college for a psychotherapist. That'd be cool. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. I'm not there yet. I really want to get more experience in the field before I move on to a master's. So hmm. we'll see. I'm not, I'm kind of just going with the flow right now. Yeah. But yeah, I'm super happy with my work with friends with my boyfriend with my family um there's everybody always has hard days and i have my hard days for sure sometimes i'm anxious to even go to work yeah right and even though i love my job there's just those days where you're like oh my gosh but i have this big thing coming up i have a i have my supervision today what if i say something bad for my supervisor you Mm. know like i'm just such an overthinker that I think something bad's gonna happen, even yeah, though it's yeah. even though it's probably not gonna happen. So, but yeah. overall, yes, I would say I'm happy currently in my mm-hmm. life. So, you think uh, being happy is hard or easy for you specifically? For me, um, <laughs> I think it really depends what's going on in my life. So, what's going around, like what's happening around you, really impacts how you feel. Yeah, yes. affects how I feel okay. because if something's going on with the family, mm-hmm. um. I'm probably not going to be happy through it, right? Because I feel like I take in the emotions of other people mm. and I take on their, their energy. Burden. Exactly. I take the on energy, their yeah. energy, their, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, if my mom's really stressed out, You'll okay, feel I'm that. also going to be stressed out. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. I guess that's kind of, uh, well, like, kind of being an empath is like in a way exactly. like i know there's a lot of jokes exactly, about that exactly. i'm an empath, I'm an empath. But, <laughs> but, no, but yeah no for real that is like what that's like yeah um definitely so is there anything that you're doing kind of daily or or i guess you know weekly whatever mm-hmm. to improve your mental health definitely i'm super into like the spiritual realm realm of things right now i know that sounds super like tiktok basic yeah. girl right now yeah. but um i'm really into it meditation yes. um yoga um affirmations i'm super into that stuff telling like it's kind of like what you said before the telling yourself positive things Mm -hmm. definitely into that you you look awesome today you (laughs) you know things like that yeah exactly right to go into meditation and Mm -hmm. and all that stuff because that's what i'm really interested in yeah uh how did you get into meditation uh i started with guided meditations Mm, because yeah super hard to just sit there and And just do it and yeah Yeah. and just not think about anything so Mm -hmm. i needed something whether on youtube or an app whatever to just tell me how to think and how to Mm -hmm. focus on my body and then after you kind of just pick like a really relaxing sound or like um frequency uh, yeah frequency i really like the singing the singing bowls yes yes i really like those Mm -hmm. so um yes the sound the frequency i have candles out sometimes like i really like to set the vibe set the mood Mm -hmm. because then i feel like i can't focus like the lights got to be dim not like totally pitch black Mm because then i get scared um (laughs) but they gotta be like dim and I'd be like comfortable whether it's I feel like you can do meditation even lying down in your bed yeah, yeah probably, so whether yeah. like lying down or sitting find a comfortable position and just like try to go blank mm-hmm. and not think about anything because with the more you overthink the less relaxed you're going to be especially for me I find mm-hmm. so I really got to be like blank slate <laughs> or else oh, I'm yeah? not going to be able to calm down interesting hmm yeah, for me, I started with guided meditation as well, mm-hmm. uh, and I started through my dad's fiance, who who I live with, oh, nice. and uh, she's a yoga instructor, wow. and she does all that. So uh, she was the one who actually bought the singing bowl. I was just with her. Oh, awesome! Um, <laughs> but it was uh, it's really cool, man. Meditation is is something that like I cannot recommend enough to people. Yeah. And like people always tell me it's so hard, it's so hard, but I feel like people actually don't try. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because like. Guided meditation is definitely one thing, but then to like get to the next level exactly. of like being able to do it just with yourself and your own thoughts is, is it takes crazy. practice. Hundred percent, definitely. You're not going to get on the first try. I didn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely, I'm thinking about what am I going to eat for dinner? Yeah, in the middle of my meditation, <laughs> but you got to be able to block literally all thoughts out, and you just got to focus on your breath, yeah, and your energy and how that flows throughout your body, right, and, and how you're how, connecting. For to, like, you, the <laughs> for you, like when you fully feel 
I don't know the proper term, but like <laughs> fully like zen out, whatever, <laughs> zen you know, <laughs> when you're fully zen out, like what's kind of like the feelings that are going through you, you know? Um, I feel like it's just, I finally get that moment of peace mm. and relaxation that I didn't get all day. Mm. Like I need that moment to just release. Yeah. It's like almost like a, a weight lift mm-hmm. off your shoulders or even like the rest of your body. Sometimes you just feel tense yeah. in one part of your body. Like for me recently, it's really been like my lower back. Yeah. So when I meditate, I really try to focus like my energy into my lower back area and try to release like any tension i don't know mm-hmm. if that makes any sense to you but yeah. try to release tension no no i know exactly from, what you're saying yeah those specific pinpoints so yeah just a total feeling of relaxation and calmness mm-hmm. i get from meditation which really helps with my anxiety so it's definitely a strategy i use yeah. to yeah to breathing is, is super powerful breath work yeah oh. breath work is amazing I cannot recommend it enough <laughs> 100%. Uh, yeah. to go into affirmations more for sure uh how did that start like was that also the same thing as meditation where you just saw it and you kind of wanted to yeah i think it? i saw it on tiktok mm-hmm. i feel like a lot of things have i think that has really stemmed from tiktok for me mm-hmm. i know that sounds like really basic but <laughs> um no, it's, good. it's definitely helped me a lot i think the way i do it i kind of like look in the mirror look at myself because it's like i'm mm. telling myself it or i write it da- write it down in like my little journal diary thing and yeah make sure i believe what i'm saying because yeah, if you don't believe is, yeah is important. exactly if you don't believe what you're saying you're not gonna really truly feel that mm-hmm. you know what i mean 100 percent. yeah and it's interesting you say like telling yourself in the mirror mm-hmm. i think that's a really good one too and uh there was actually a period where when i was really really struggling mm-hmm. uh like with just depression and a lot of things uh one of the one of my personal biggest struggles was kind of kind of accepting the child me, Mm -hmm. you know, like accepting that I, you know, I'm naturally loud and goofy and all these things, you know, and, and, and accepting that version of me was super hard. So I had to actually look in the mirror and and tell the younger version of myself, like, like, I love you. Like, that's something that (laughs) I actually had to do, you know, of course. And I, and I did that like daily for a long time because, uh, it was like a healing process and and now it I feel so much better you know just like as a person and, and about exactly. my childhood and, and all these things so um, yeah looking in the mirror and telling yourself mm-hmm. I love you is, is not <laughs> as weird as it sounds I promise yes. no, and it's I feels good and yeah. I feel like with my job um, a lot of people suffer from burnout and like vicarious trauma through other young people yeah so I wanted to ask about that yeah so yeah. F- um learning about other people's pasts and trauma can really um hurt you as well because you feel you take that on Mm because you're supporting them and you're trying to give them advice and strategies to use to to deal with that trauma or deal with your anxiety or deal with your depression right Mm -hmm. so for you to help them you have to make sure that you are fully healed as well because if you're not if you don't love yourself and you don't like the way you are, you can't help other people. No. You have no. to be totally 100% you and authentic and just be yourself with the young person because young people don't like when you treat them like they're younger than you. Like mm-hmm. they're not the same not the same or as you or you not respected mm-hmm. the same as you, right? So you got to really be like, "Hey, I'm on your level. We're going to I'm going to talk like you. I'm going to we're yeah. going to like we're hanging out." They don't out. want to feel disrespected. Exactly. Sure, yeah. You got to be like, "This is a hangout session, yes. you know? We're cool." Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you really got to make them feel comfortable in that sense and not make them feel that you're above them because mm. then you're just going to create power struggles and that's not fair to the young person at all. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, where do you want to be within the next few years, like career wise and just life wise as mm, well? Career wise, I really want to just expand in the different sectors of my field. So, as a child news care practitioner, you can really work in various settings, such as a hospital, schools, um, live in treatment centers, um, in the community. Um, so, I really want to experience different realms because mm-hmm. i feel like right now most of my experience is within schools mm-hmm. and in the education system but i'd really like to venture out into different areas just to get a different perspectives different perspective of different practitioners because mm-hmm. i feel like every sector is different and i also want to work with um, different age groups because mm-hmm. my experience right now is with younger children and i want to get a lot more with like teenagers okay right? why I, do you want to get into that i feel like they 
know they can express themselves more they see the world differently than obviously young minds Mm -hmm. and um i feel like they have more grasp on their feelings and their past Hmm. right the child is going through it right now yes for the teenager may still be going through things but they've already probably went through things Hmm. that they can sure yeah it's probably easier to assess trauma rather than like Mm -hmm. assess whatever's happening in life currently i guess exactly you can assess trauma with a young person like especially if they had like someone in their immediate family uh pass suddenly or they witnessed they witness uh physical violence abuse emotional violence like there's a lot of things that little ones witness that they cannot process just Mm -hmm. because their their brains are not fully developed yet and that's what you work through with the younger ones right Mm -hmm. but with the older ones their brains have developed more and they can realize okay that really hurt me and this is why i'm looking at the world this way because this is what happened to me in the past Mm. right yeah yeah Mm -hmm. that makes sense interesting uh, how did you, like, kind of get into all this spiritual mindset? <laughs> like, were you just kind of born, you know, kind of more spiritual? Because, like, for me, I was not born <laughs> spiritual at all. I was born, like, more, like, you know, against uh, that, stuff? Uh, that, that stuff. Yeah. Um, do you mean, like, religion or? Uh, not just religion, because, like, religion is, is one thing. But I, I just mm-hmm. mean, uh, I don't know. You seem like you're really tapped into uh, <laughs> Your, yourself and your mind and everything is that just to do with your job and everything i think so yeah. i think starting my program i definitely because you have to know yourself before uh-huh. you work with young people like i mentioned before yeah so we did a, a ton of exercises in first year and second year where we just literally wrote about ourselves for like five courses oh, wow. you're writing your past life your trauma your what triggers you, you have to really know yourself oh, to be able to do the work. That's cool. Right? Yeah. So like literally all the first year I was like learning about myself yeah. and what I need to help support me. What are my, what are my self care needs? Yeah. Like meditation is a big one for me. Exercise is big. Um, breath work, like I mentioned mm-hmm. is huge. So I think that was a strategy for me, mm-hmm. um, to be able to deal with my triggers and my anxieties as well. Mm. That's awesome. What's kind of your thoughts on positivity? Do you think that being positive can kind of contribute to being happier overall? I think it can definitely contribute to your mindset. Like it's it's all a mindset thing. Like you have to, if you're saying positive things to yourself, you're going to, I think you're going to feel more positive. You're going to be more positive. Mm-hmm. But like I said before, you got to truly believe it. I feel like we've mentioned this like thousands of times during this podcast, but <laughs> I feel like you got to true, you got to truly feel it in your heart to really feel the positivity and, and happiness. Mm-hmm. And it's how you look at the world. If you keep looking at the world, like, Oh man, I didn't get that job. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to move on with my life. You know, yeah, like yeah. that's just no, you just try again. Go on Indeed. That's what I've really been doing for <laughs> yeah. the past few months. Going on Indeed, looking at jobs. Okay, I didn't get that interview. Okay, don't worry. They, they missed for out the on one. my skill set. Yes. Go for the next one. You know, 100%. you just you just keep trying and that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, being positive yeah. is uh, is definitely hard. At least in the beginning, like if you're not mm-hmm. naturally just a super bubbly, positive no, person, you know, no. but, uh, but especially meaning it, like we mentioned, it is super hard also. I feel like, oh yeah, it, it's a process and you just have to learn to trust that process exactly. at the end of the day. Um, and putting trust into yourself and into the universe that everything's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Like I have to tell myself like, this is just temporary. Yeah. It's going to be okay in a few days. It's going to be okay next month, mm-hmm. right? Next week, whatever yeah, it is. 100%, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like knowing that, uh, you kind of create your own karma, mm-hmm. you know, like good and bad. Exactly. Like it kind of eliminates a lot of stress for me, you know, where yeah. like now, even though I still get stressed about things cause I'm still human uh, when something happens, I'm able to look at it and be like, okay, well, you know, maybe this is happening, but something good is going to come out of it and I can kind of just step back. Exactly. You know? And uh, yeah, that's a big skill that is definitely hard to learn, but it's good to uh, good to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, are you nervous in big crowds and like around people? <laughs> oh, like yeah. Because you mentioned you had anxiety. Yeah. yeah. So uh, like talking in front of people, that's Oh, a, it's, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty that's bad. That's a no-no. Yeah. Um, university was really hard for me to meet friends because I feel like in high school everybody's just around you all the time. You know mm. the people you go so to high school with. So you're just naturally gonna kind of exactly right. Yeah. Where in university you have different classes with different people, mm-hmm. and 
honestly, if the people that I met in university didn't come up to me first, mm-hmm. I think I wouldn't have any friends. No, <laughs> yeah. like literally, I have such yeah. a hard time going up to people. Um, I what, guess what like, is it that's hard about it? Like, what what's uh, like the fear? Yeah, I get in my head. I think. Oh my god, they're gonna think I talk weird. They're gonna think I dress weird. Oh, so I like look you, weird. It's just an overthinking thing. It's, it's not like you, there's a one specific no, trait or whatever. Okay. No, it's very much. I get in my own head. I overthink things that I say. Like to give you a specific example, I was at the gym. I was doing a Zumba class, and I go to this specific class every uh, Thursday evening at seven mm-hmm. whatever right <laughs> and this girl who was new i guess saw that i already knew the dance moves because i've been doing it for a few weeks mm-hmm. and she came up to me after class and she was like oh do you come <laughs> to this class like every thursday and i was like and i was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she's like oh like what's your name <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> and i'm like stuttering to like yeah. talk to her and i'm thinking as i'm trying to talk to her I'm thinking in my head, like, you sound so stupid right now. Mm. Like, what is wrong with You're you? Why can't you talk? On, on yeah. And that is what's making me stutter because all the self negativity and the negative self-talk is what's making me stutter yeah just think about what you're gonna say it's and a say cycle. It. it's a cycle yeah, <laughs> yeah it's crazy. exactly yeah that's wild wow um so like when you say you, you stutter a lot like mm-hmm. like what, what do you mean like how bad is it like uh, is it like you, you physically can't get can, the words can't out get the words out like oh, I'm like, I see. It's, it's, uh, uh, yeah oh, like wow. literally like that like mm-hmm. i was trying to say to her um is this your first time at this class? And I was just like, is it? Yeah, like I was trying so hard. And this this chick's like looking at me like, hello? (laughs) So you said, said, uh, or I said that, like that's kind of the biggest like fear. Mm -hmm. Um, Is there like, I guess a memory or a story or something where there was a time where you went up to somebody and like they did judge you? And that's kind of why you're super, you know, like, well, somebody will judge me. Or has that Mm -hmm. never happened and it's just, purely your own i think overthinking i think it's purely my own overthinking but there Mm -hmm. was definitely times in elementary school where i was bullied for certain things or Mm -hmm. like just the way you would dress or the way you looked your hair your your makeup what what store you got your clothes anything. from anything right as a kid yeah exactly so i think i felt that in elementary school and it just stuck so you, so you uh, were bullied then, like at, at small periods? Mm, I wouldn't say heavily. Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't say like I was bullied and I didn't want to go to school. Like it wasn't it mm-hmm. wasn't anything like that. I think it was more like the clothes I wore. Um, as you probably know, as an Italian, like Italian women do grow hair yeah. on their arms and their legs. So Which is I, totally okay. Exactly. Yes. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it is normal and nobody <laughs> yeah. should be ashamed of body hair. But anyway. Yeah. Um, I was in the change room one time, you know, with the girls. You're getting changed for gym. And girls would constantly pick on me for having mm. hair on my legs, hair on my arms. Yeah. And that really, like, uh, hurt my self-image. Yeah. I think elementary school was definitely worse than high school. I, did, I don't think high school was a bad time for me for mm. as an aspect of um, bullying. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that grade 7, grade 8 period, those girls, they it's just... It's the awkward phase. You know? Exactly. Everybody's going yeah. through puberty. And there's the moms that let their young girls shave and yeah. i literally went home to my mom Being that european, night. european that's not happening bro. exactly not happening. i literally went home to my mom that night and was crying to her i was like can you please let me shave my yeah. legs oh, because so i'm sad. getting bullied for that's it so sad. Right? that's crazy that's crazy that yeah. like just because of what they said is now having to make you like want to shave and do all these things that exactly. you shouldn't even have to do it's exactly society exactly like- it's a societal norm to mm-hmm. for girls to be hairless and yeah. it's not that's not normal right yeah. everybody grows body that's hair and yeah. everybody should be able to do with their body what they want to do yeah. with their body i agree 100 percent. uh how many close friends would you say that you have in your life um, right now not very many mm-hmm. honestly my my friends are um very minimal <laughs> and, like if you could if you could uh like list just not n- the actual names, names but like <laughs> the number like, um what would it be like two, three, one, more? Mm. I'd say three. Three? Three like tight knit mm. people. And mm. then the rest, I'd say like they're friends, but they're not like someone I would go to in a hard time. Mm. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, do you ever feel lonely? Um, yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, when, when, Tilio's out all the time or my parents are not home and I'm mm-hmm. alone or I don't know like me and Tilio 
are pretty close for brother and sister and now he's yeah. got he's gotten older and he leaves the house constantly he's never home yeah he's so out this a kid lot. is never home he is and out i'm a like lot. my god where's my brother uh who am i gonna watch a movie with yeah tonight? <laughs> you know? sure. so mm-hmm. so yeah definitely that sibling uh bond is like it's it's loosening a mm-hmm. little bit but it's okay we're growing we're adults it's okay yeah. but uh well you mentioned uh you have a boyfriend right yeah he yeah. definitely makes me feel like supported and comforted and someone i can definitely go to mm-hmm. whenever i need something like i'll just call them randomly and be like what are you up to <laughs> just because i'm bored are you, know? you guys uh like long distance or or no live he lives about half an hour away from oh, okay. me okay so not too bad no no yeah. not bad at all so how do you feel about being uh in a relationship right now um, you feel like you're like you're good you're good for that right now yeah definitely yeah. it's um i i feel very healthy mm. in this relationship because i have had very toxic relationships in the past in mm-hmm. high school and and um he definitely makes me feel um like myself and I could be com- comfortable with him and I know I'm not being judged in the relationship and he treats me with so much respect and treats me like a princess honestly I that's feel nice. I feel very that's loved good. in my relationship he's amazing that's nice that's awesome uh do you sleep well do I sleep well yeah. um yeah I don't have a hard time sleeping hard time sleeping Mm -hmm. but if i have something the next day that i'm worried about or overthinking about i don't sleep Mm -hmm. i probably maybe sleep two hours max in the night yeah Yeah, because i'm just overthinking um what's gonna happen like uh in high school was more for tests and stuff like that um even my graduation when i finished university like i knew i was gonna graduate the next day and i was (laughs) like i barely slept because i was like oh my gosh what if i go up on the stage and i fall what if I trip on yeah, the so stage? Just like, thinking it, that deep. Wow. Yeah. Okay, like I just see. every little s- every moment detail. of that day. Mm-hmm. What if I make a mistake? Wow. You know? Yeah. No, yeah. no, I, I definitely feel that overthinking is uh, something that I definitely do. I don't do as much as before, mm-hmm. but uh, I haven't even experienced it to that level where it's <laughs> like it was like, you know, like every, every moment. It's, yeah. It's really every moment, but yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying yeah, so no. hard yeah. not to overthink, especially within my relationships, mm-hmm. especially with my boyfriend. I feel like I overthink a lot and honestly i feel bad because i'm creating stories in my head that aren't even true yeah and then i'm projecting that onto him and he's like what (laughs) that's literally not what's gonna happen (laughs) what is wrong with you well communication is key so as long as uh you guys talk i'm sure you'll be okay exactly um but i want to finally ask you this question Mm -hmm. uh what was the worst time in your life uh i think the worst time in my life was i think I mentioned before beginning of high school was Mm -hmm. really really hard for me um just the the not eating the not sleeping the the constant like getting down on myself I Mm -hmm. think I was in a really I wouldn't say depressive state I'd say anxious state Mm. I was constantly anxious and stressed and I just couldn't get out of it Mm -hmm. um and then I guess uh, when my dad passed away, that was a really hard time in my life, but I was mm-hmm. only six. So I wouldn't say it's the uh, most, like, not that it was impactful, yeah. but it wasn't the most um, anxiety inducing. Yeah, because you weren't as, as older, as much like older as you were later, I guess, right? Exactly. Yeah. I, um, like, I knew it was happening, mm-hmm. I knew it was going on, but still, at, at six, your brain is still not able to fully understand the meaning of death mm-hmm. and what it and fully comprehend the, exactly you know heaven the scope and of whatever you think yeah wherever yeah. you go when you die uh-huh. you're not fully honestly i just saw my mom and how she felt and i'm like okay wait should i be feeling this way mm-hmm. how do i how do i help my mom at six years old right and yeah. when she's supporting two young kids well, what was that like uh, if you're okay to go of into course, it yeah. um like what was your mom kind of like at least from what she presented yeah my mom was super strong Uh but my mom worked a lot so Mm -hmm. she didn't have enough time to spend with us after work she'd go to work come home cook we'd eat dinner and then it was time for us to go to bed yeah so um i think she really felt that that had an impact on me and my brother Mm -hmm. so she ended up getting um a nanny like an in-house nanny to um help relieve some of those uh chores after after work so Mm -hmm. instead of her making dinner 
um, our nanny would make dinner and she'd be able to sit spend on the couch with us and watch TV, play games, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, do just, the normal yeah, kid time. stuff you want to do with your parents. Yeah. Well, that's that's that really age. commendable. Yeah, we actually had to cut real quick because uh, <laughs> our parent came in, but it's OK. Uh, I'll just go straight into the next question. Um, a little more serious. Are you scared of death? Uh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely scared mm-hmm. of dying. The idea of death because I feel like I don't know where I'm gonna. I'm don't know where I'm gonna go. Where I'm gonna mm-hmm. be? Where's my spirit gonna go? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I overthink about the smallest things. Uh-huh. Like I think. Over- what What's like your your uh, fear of it? Is it like the afterlife part? Is yeah. It, so not like the actual, but you know, I feeling don't think it like, or whatever. No, I don't think it's the feeling of dying. Mm. As long as it's not like a painful sure, way. Yeah. But like I think it's like where am I going to go? Like, yeah. I know my physical body is going to be here, but yeah. like, where is my spirit going to go? Your soul, go? all that, your energy, whatever. Am yeah. I still going to remember things? Or yeah. am I going to be like, transferred into a different <laughs> like, body yeah, or animal? Yeah. Like, if you like, believe in reincarnation, like, mm-hmm. are you So, going- So, do you have any like, uh, solid belief in in any of that honestly, stuff honestly no or are you just kind of open I don't, I'm pretty open, I'm pretty uh-huh. open to it. Honestly, when I think of death, I think of my dad yeah. and I think the, the, thinking about him makes me feel better about it mm-hmm. almost like okay if i if i die i get to be reunited with him mm. almost yeah. you know yeah, yeah i think that's the way i think in a positive way sure. to not freak myself out i about think it. that's the way most people kind of uh cope with it especially mm-hmm. i find people who um are kind of like based in religion i guess like mm-hmm. a lot of their thoughts you know, I think that's uh, true for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so what's kind of your thoughts on like hell and, and that kind of? <laughs> I, I don't want to go to it. Yeah. <laughs> that's definitely yeah. like it's, it's. So you believe in, in hell then? Would you say? I don't, you don't I don't know. know. It's okay to say you don't know. I feel like there's just so many different possibilities. Mm. Like there's so many different beliefs out there. Heaven, hell, reincarnation, the spiritual realm going into the yeah. universe like i i don't i don't know and i think it's the unknown that mm. freaks me out so fair much enough. fair enough even like with my future like i I've, i get scared of where i'm gonna be like you asked me where am i gonna be in five years i'm nervous about that like that's mm-hmm. a scary question to me yeah. because like i don't know and mm-hmm. i want to be able to plan for it but that's something really hard to plan for it and yeah, you can't living, plan living for the, death living in the present is exactly is the, the most important thing that you can do <laughs> yeah uh, exactly is that something that you're good at living in the present no no i i'm horrible at it yeah i'm that really it, bad at it too. Yeah, yeah definitely i i'm constantly thinking about the future i'm thinking about the past as well mm-hmm. and like why what about the past like what do you mean um like like uh in more of a nostalgic sense you think about the past or, or just like whatever random thoughts come into yeah you? like random scenarios that made me feel embarrassed or mm. anxious or feeling not good feelings yeah. that i felt in the past that would just randomly pop into my mind in the middle of the night really yeah huh. interesting <laughs> it's like yeah your brain always plays, tries to play it tricks really on you, does you know? <laughs> yeah uh would you say you're a grateful person Yes, I'm. I'm very yeah. grateful. For yeah, you seem very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> you seem very grateful. Uh, only two more questions. No worries. Uh, what is one more thing that you wish more people would kind of be aware of when it comes to mental health, and one thing they would rather like they would talk about more? What's thing? One thing. Uh, utilize the resources that are available to you. Mm-hmm. There are so many, especially for young people, so many free resources that are so easily accessible Mm -hmm. um that you can utilize whether it's anxiety depression whether you're on the verge of homelessness you have trouble with body image eating Mm -hmm. there are so many resources whether that's through i know companies like 360 kids right now i work for canark child and family services i know so many there's hotlines Mm -hmm. use them you know what i mean don't be afraid to go um to use the help that's available for you and and just get the help you need because you don't want to go through it alone. It's not fun to go through it alone. Yeah, for and sure. And if you can't, if you're too scared to go to somebody um, professional, see if you have somebody in your life you can talk to. Mm. And you really got to put that trust into maybe one person in your life that you know, like, okay, they're not going to judge me if I go and talk about my personal things with them. Mm. And I hope everybody in their life has that one person because it's it's tough to be alone and in your thoughts and in your mental health. 
Yeah, right? it is very it's difficult to really be alone. Hard 100%. To be alone. Yeah. Uh, well, one more question mm-hmm. and then I'll wrap it up here. What does have a good day mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. What I just said previously was going to be my message, mm-hmm. but I yeah, want to say. Yeah, you reinforce that if you want. Go ahead. Um, I want to say, oh, I, yeah, I think I'll say it again, but I want to say something different. I think have mm-hmm. a good day for me. I see you post it all the time and it's mm-hmm. really like, okay, like go out into the world and have a good day. Like yeah. it's simply just that. Don't think, don't wellow in your problems and your anxieties and your stresses. Look, what's what's next? What's what's the good thing that's going to happen mm-hmm. today? And look forward to that. Yes. Okay, my job. I'm going to go see my little ones today. Let's see what we can do. What what games are we going to play? What mm-hmm. am, what music am I going to play at Circle Time today? <laughs> yeah. Those are the things. The little things. Exactly. You know, that you need to look forward to. The things will make you happiest, I find. Exactly, the little things. You know, and uh, what yeah, that, that was something that I had to learn was like, being i talked about this with ricky Mm -hmm. being happy and happiness is literally all around you 24 7 like i am always on the bus right and always on the subway and all this shit and people could look at that and and be like oh you know take public transit that must suck which obviously yeah it's not insanely (laughs) fun yeah you know it's not especially right now in winter yeah but you know i'm able to look at it as when I'm on the bus, I look through the window and I'm always just seeing new things and mm-hmm. I take photos of things and, and it's just like all these small things that make me exactly. happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that's the most it's, important it's thing. It's definitely the little things in life that will make you happy. Mm-hmm. Looking out the window, seeing the sunset makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Seeing a smile on a young person's face when I know I've had a breakthrough is it makes me happy. There are those little things that everybody needs to find that makes them happy. And, yeah. So yeah. What, what does make you happiest, would you say? What are like mm. these little things? Yeah, I think the one I just mentioned, when I have a breakthrough with a young person, they tell me something really personal or they f- they tell me, Ariana, I feel comfortable telling you about my life. Mm-hmm. That is the <laughs> best thing I could ever hear from yeah. a young person. Well, that's your whole job, right? right? To, Knowing yeah. that a young person is comfortable coming to me and talking about their personal issues their personal even if it's happy happy things Mm -hmm. i want them to be able to be comfortable and tell me those things whether it's good or bad and Mm -hmm. knowing that i'm there to support them and not be judgmental about anything that goes on in their life because i'm not i want to hear all the good things and (laughs) and i'm there for you for the bad things (laughs) you know (laughs) yeah that's awesome well thank you so much for coming on my gosh no worries yeah i really really appreciate it uh, I think it's been a really good episode. I think that there was a lot that we covered. <laughs> and you didn't talk too much. You did very good. I promise. <laughs> I feel like I definitely had a <laughs> very little, few run-ons. Yeah. No, but no, you, you did You did very well. So thank, thank you for you. listening to the sixth episode of the Have a Good Day podcast for mental health and all things positivity. My name is Jack Mancini. Remember to breathe in and breathe out. And don't forget, have a good day. <laughs>